Some of you heard that I had tested positive for HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. That is indeed the case. I have known since the time of my brain operation in September 1988 that I have AIDS. Arthur Ashe's shocking announcement of a disease that may rob his future forces us to remember his past. It is 25 years since Ashe won the first Open U.S. Championship. He tasted victory, too, at Wimbledon and led the U.S. as player and captain in the Davis Cup. Off the court, Ash has been a champion, too, raising the consciousness of the nation's leaders on causes like education in the cities. He's been outspoken on many issues, such as racism. In the 70s, Ash traveled to South Africa, a walking contradiction of apartheid. Ash still works at giving young people inspiration and an example of excellence. For despite his painful announcement, Arthur Ashe is still looking forward. I consider myself fairly lucky because uh, by the current standards of uh, longevity, once diagnosed with AIDS, which I was in September 88, I shouldn't be here now, but I'm still here and doing fairly well. <laughs> You're looking at the National Tennis Center in New York City, and it is the site of the upcoming U.S. Open, but today it will feature the Arthur Ashe AIDS Tennis Challenge. And it's been a busy day on the grounds already, as a brunch opened the day's festivities and the action to follow. Friends and supporters of Arthur Ashe and his cause gathering to get things underway, including Mike Wallace from CBS 60 Minutes and tennis great Bill Talbert. And many of the stars of the past and present joined in to help collect donations and spread information about AIDS awareness, including John McEnroe. The stars have come out the day before the U.S. Open begins here at the National Tennis Center to support the launching of the Arthur Ashe Foundation for the Defeat of AIDS. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Ryan here on a sunny, breezy afternoon at the National Tennis Center. And in our tennis action today, you're going to see four of the greats in men's tennis. Sampras and Courier, Agassi and McEnroe, and four of the women's greats. Steffi Graf, Mary Jo Fernandez, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, and Pam Shriver. And they'll all be playing in tie-break shootouts to determine their respective champions. You'll also see some celebrity doubles featuring the likes of Monica and Martina and Wallace and Dinkins, and they're all here in support of this very worthy cause, helping to fight the scourge of AIDS and to raise awareness about the prevention of this terrible disease. Well, earlier this afternoon, the uh, mayor of the city of New York delivered a proclamation, a special one, for Arthur Ashe. It is Arthur Ashe Day. And whereas good-humored and serious, reflective, enlightening quick physically and mentally. Arthur Ashe is devoted to his wife, Jeannie, and their daughter, Camera, to our nation's young people and their futures, and to finding or making solutions to problems that to others may seem insoluble. As he faces a great challenge himself, his thoughts and efforts are on behalf of others, an inspiration to all New Yorkers. Now, therefore, I, David N. Dinkins, Mayor of the City of New York, in recognition of this great New Yorker, do hereby proclaim Sunday, August 30th, 1992, in the City of New York, as Arthur Ashe Day. Well, Mayor David Dinkins proclaiming Arthur Ashe Day, and here's how our matchups will be this afternoon. It'll be Steffi Groff starting off in her tie break against Pam Schreiber. That'll be followed in the other semifinal by Mary Jo Fernandez against Sanchez Vicario, the two winners to meet in the championship. On the men's side, you'll be seeing Jim Courier, the top seed in the U.S. Open, against fellow American Pete Sampras, and then it'll be John McEnroe and his new buddy Andre Agassi in their semifinal, the winners to meet to decide the men's title. Well, I'm joined now by our CBS tennis analyst, 
Tony Trabert and Mary Carrillo. And uh, Mary, I think it's remarkable and a great tribute to Arthur Ashe that uh, he could gather all of the forces and factions in tennis <laughs> for such a worthy cause. That's not an easy task. It really isn't, Tim, and uh, that's so true. Tennis is rife with warring factions and the clash of personalities. And to think that just one day before the start of the U.S. Open, so many men and women would come together just shows how beloved and how respected Arthur Ashe is and how committed uh, a lot of the athletes are to the fight against AIDS. No doubt about it. And Tony, uh, of course, these tennis players are playing a lot of exhibitions for many worthy causes. Not too often do they play this tie-break shootout format. How do they possibly get ready? What do you expect? Well, they don't really get ready, Tim. <laughs> they get nervous what happens. It goes so quickly. They get a two-minute warm-up, though they may warm up on another court. Uh, they are out here for a good cause and a terrific guy. They're donating their time and their talents, and it should be a lot of fun to watch. It should be very entertaining, and I have a feeling we'll see some great shot making as well. They'll be loose, and they'll be having fun out there. And we'll be starting with Groff against Schreiber when we return to the National Tennis Center live in just a moment. CBS Sports presents the Arthur Ashe Age Tennis Challenge, sponsored by Aetna, a policy to do more. And in part by Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. I want to ask you about something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm crazy about you. I'm crazy about you, too. That's it? <laughs> what? What? Come on, what? Mitsubishi believes that a luxury car should offer something beyond the usual luxuries. It may be extraordinary power and control, a consummate blend of comfort and performance or a state-of-the-art four-wheel drive system. The 3000 GT, the Diamante, the Montero. Lease the luxury car of your choice. Only $3.99 a month for 36 months. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. When you publish thousands of newsletters a week, color is out of the question. Invest in the fastest highlight color laser printer and come to a different conclusion. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Our sales figures were confusing. No one understood them. With our digital color copier, you get the clarity of color with the stroke of a pen and touch of a screen. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Putting it together. Just northwest of Kalispell, Montana, there's a place where you can punch cattle instead of a time clock and discover what horsepower is really about. It's the Hargrave Cattle and Guest Ranch, where you can ride them and rope them like they used to. But if you go, you got to pull your own weight and pull out your piece of card. Because at Hargrave, they don't take the tin horns and they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The Arthur Ashe AIDS Tennis Challenge about to get underway at the USDA National Tennis Center. And it's a beautiful day here. Everybody hopes this will stay for the entire U.S. Open. 77 degrees. The only problem at all for these players, a little wind down on center court. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo and Tony Trabert and awaiting the first match between Steffi Graf and Pam Shriver. It will be a 12-point tiebreak, first to seven. Must win by two. And Steffi Graf comes into the tournament, ranked number two in the world. And I think primed uh, to try and win the U.S. Open this year, taking away from Monica Seles. I got to think so. She's been in the final of the U.S. Open for the past five years. She's won it twice. Of course, this year, uh, she said uh, she's already won four titles, including, of course, Wimbledon, where she just destroyed Monica Seles in the final, 6-2, 6-1, after she'd lost a heartbreaker to Seles in the final of the French. Pam Shriver, one of the most popular players uh, ever in American women's tennis, Tony. And also one of the greatest doubles players of all time. Her singles ranking has slipped. She doesn't really play as much as she, as she did. Uh, this year, uh, she has not won any titles. Uh, a wonderful person, both on and off the tennis court. And she's going to have a lot of fun in this match. You can bet on that one. Well, I think they'll have a lot of fun just uh, working the chair umpire, too, because he happens to be our own CBS 60 Minutes star, Mike Wallace, 
and I heard him just a few minutes ago nervously asking about how to give the score. So we know he's uh, a little shaky already. Features 1988 Golden and Grand Slam winner Steffi Graf and five-time U.S. Open doubles champion Pam Schreiber. We will be playing a 12-point tiebreak. Pam Schreiber will have the first serve. If the score gets to 10 all, the players will play one point to decide the winner. Let's begin. Well, you know, Mike said before that he was awfully nervous. He did that very well. Yes, he did. Yeah, he was working from the script. Let's see what happens during the match here. If these girls get on his case, he might be a little more nervous. He, he said, I don't see too well. I'm worried about the calls. As you have lines, people just say I don't overrule in the Grand Slam event. <laughs> well, you mentioned, uh, Tony, that it's, uh, it's kind of hard for the players to, to really get ready for a tie break. You can't have server. much of a strategy. You don't get long warm up. You just got all of a sudden you're firing away. Absolutely. You got to get a quick start. They're going to have fun. That's the main thing. So Shriver will serve. Shriver so takes a one zero lead. Zero Steffi Graf uh, been bothered a little bit by a shoulder injury that bothered her a year ago at this time. And so a little bit of cause for concern in the upcoming tournament. All right. Two zero Schreiber. Pam Schreiber greatest success as a singles player, of course, occurred on this court where she beat Martina Navratilova as a 15-year-old in her first U.S. Open to get to the final before losing to Chris Everett. Her only Grand Slam final ever in her long career. Two, one, one try. try. a little off guard of course she likes to get over there and try and wheel away at that forehand 4-1 You mentioned Tim, it's gusty out there. That's the one thing that tennis players dislike is a, is a gusty win. It's so difficult to judge the ball. Blows your toss around on your serve. Well, as you've pointed out many times over the years here, uh, as we look at the wind straightening out the flag, it swirls down there too, so yep. you just you think it's coming one way at you, and the next point it can be completely turning in the opposite direction. Four two Schreiber changes on. Four two Schreiber lead, and cheer umpire Mike Wallace is all over it here. He's got the command to change ends in case the ladies forget. <laughs> You know, I think it's important to let our viewers know that that these players are playing for nothing. You know, everybody talks about how much money they make and how greedy they are. They're they're here for a good cause and a wonderful guy in Arthur Ashe. Well, that came through loud and clear talking to many of the competitors here today. Rob closes to 4-3. Especially, Tony, the, the idea that the U.S. Open does begin tomorrow, most, of the, most days... Someone like Steffi Groff would want to just isolate herself and really feel like concentrating on her tennis. Instead, she's out here showing her showing her good stuff to about 8,000 fans. She also wants to isolate her forehand, just like she did there for two weeks. <laughs> yes. Bye, everybody. 
Shriver Shriver drop and a 5-3 lead for Shriver. Just one tie break will determine the winner of this semifinal, and the winner will advance to await the winner of Mary Jo Fernandez and Arancha Sanchez Vicario. Six three. way long Schreiber. Rob. Uh, Three yeah. match points now for Shriver. Just six absolute dynamite, you know. Both feet off the ground and just hammers that thing as hard as she can. Saves a match point. She still has two of them against her. Big serve. Way long. And Pam Schreiber has advanced to the final with a 7-4 tiebreak win. Talking to Pam last evening about this match, uh, she didn't really come in with a whole lot of confidence that she was a, a shootout tiebreak against Stephanie Groff. <laughs> Ms. Shriver will proceed to the finals. Now we're going to be following this first women's match with our first men's match of the afternoon. It'll be Courier against Sampras. That's upcoming. And also throughout the course of the afternoon, we'll be bringing you some AIDS awareness with a number of tennis's top stars asking questions you yourself might. Hi, I'm Pam Shriver. Can you contract the AIDS virus from kissing or from someone sneezing on you? The answer to that question is no. Um, there's been documentation that the virus is, in fact, can be found in tears, saliva, but the amount of virus in those particular body fluids is so small, so minuscule, that it's virtually impossible to spread the virus. Hey, I'm vain. Of course I'm vain. That's why I comb my hair the way I do. That's why I stay in shape. To compete against men half your age takes a certain kind of power. That's why I play like an animal. The power of power stick. I give it everything I have. 50% more wetness and odor fighters per stroke. This works best for me. I don't want people going around saying, whew, that Connors, he's tough to be around. Power stick by Fabergé. Power that won't let you down. And for women, there's triple action lady power antiperspirant. Power that won't let you down. When you drive by the statues and memorials, you may start to cry. And there's a white house in this city, and we always get to choose the person who lives in it. There are over four million miles of roads in Alamo territory, all across America, and nationwide. Only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, including the 1,100 miles in a city called Washington, in a district called Columbia, in a country we call ours. The United States Tennis Association is helping to make tennis a game for everyone. From tournament competitors, to grassroots, and at the very highest level. The United States Tennis Association, serving the tennis world in America. Back here at the National Tennis Center, where Pam Shriver has advanced to the women's final with her victory over Steffi Graf. She'll meet the winner of Mary Jo Fernandez and Arancha Sanchez Vicario. And both of the women are at courtside with our Pat O'Brien, who joins us now. Pat? All right, Tim, thank you. Indeed, they are. And congratulations to you. We'll get to Steffi in a minute. Congratulations to you. Did you expect to win this one? Oh, well, uh... <laughs> Tie break, I guess anyone's got a chance. It's my best win in a while, and I feel pretty good about it, but uh, <laughs> I hope I haven't peaked on the Sunday before the Open starts. How quickly did you say yes when Arthur Ashe talked to you, I guess, at Wimbledon about this project? Well, I knew I wanted to help out in whatever way, and then, uh, as it turned out, I didn't know I was going to play the tie break until Manuela Maleva sprained her ankle and uh, couldn't play, so I found out two days ago. Steffi Graf, as uh, Pete Sampras and Jim Courier come on the court. How's your shoulder feel, by the way? Yeah, it feels pretty good right now. The last two days have been without pain, so it's great. And uh, they say it's a wide open open this year. How do you see your chances? I think they're pretty good. I think the only thing that disturbs me is that I didn't have a chance to play another 
tournament on the hard courts before. But I think uh, it is a very interesting tournament and something that I really look forward to. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Congratulations, Pam. See you later. Yeah, thanks. Back to the booth. Thank you, Pat. Well, Arthur Ashe is on hand with his wife, Jean, and his lovely daughter, Camera. And uh, action will continue shortly. We'll be back with the Arthur Ashe AIDS Tennis Challenge after this message from your local station. Hi, my name is Pete Sanfors. How can I protect myself from AIDS? Protection from the AIDS virus is really very simple. I want you to practice safe sex or abstinence, and if one uses drugs, not to share needles. Can you identify with this? I dream a lot that I'm making out in the car with Kevin Costner. Welcome to Middle Ages, a special two-hour premiere Thursday. Are you ready to laugh? Friday night on CBS. I'm ready. Look who we've got lined up. Your favorite stars are signed up. Friday, ha, 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 ha. A golden laparama. Major bonanza. Friday, ha, ha, ha. Friday's getting funny this fall on CBS. Ha, ha. This is CBS. Come on, Raisin Bran is Raisin Bran. What's this? Total Raisin Bran, huh? Big Crisp Flakes. Lots of raisins. Mm. Uh, this is amazing. Total Raisin Bran has 100% uh, of lots of vitamins and minerals. Hmm. And Kellogg's has only one. I'm surprised. Total Raisin Bran. The Raisin Bran with the total difference. I just assumed they were all the same, but they're not. When it comes to economy, durability, and safety, come to Consumers Concrete. Concrete offers years of maintenance-free service. Its solid durability isn't affected by heat. Concrete's light reflectivity provides security at night, and the surface can be textured so it isn't slippery. And nothing looks as good as concrete. Build your best ideas on Consumers Concrete with locations throughout Michigan and Indiana. Donahue, Monday at 5. Joining us today at the Arthur Ashe AIDS Tennis Challenge, the giant red, white, and green Fuji blimp. The pilots are captains John McHugh and John McGurk. Sounds like an Irish doubles team up there flying the Fuji blimp for us today. And our men's match will feature the top seed in the U.S. Open, about to begin here at Flushing Meadow, Jim Courier, ranked number one in the world from Dade City, Florida, against Pete Sampras. And Courier, I guess, uh, might have a little bit of doubt, uh, Mary, coming in here as things haven't gone as well from this summer as they have for his opponent today, Sampras. Well, that's very true. In fact, these two played on this court about a year ago at the U.S. Open. Courier beat Pete. He then beat Jimmy Connors, ended his wild run before finally losing to Stefan Edberg. Since then, though, he won the Australian Open in 92. He won the French Open. He had a tough Wimbledon and, a, and another very big disappointment in Barcelona when he couldn't win Olympic gold. Didn't medal at all there. And he is number one in the world and obviously uh, looking for a victory in the U.S. Open, which would be his first. Pete Sampras has won the U.S. Open title, uh, Tony, and uh, is having another great summer. He's the hottest male player playing right now, in my opinion. He is doing what he did two years ago when he won this. He's peaking just right. He's been raised really hot. He's won four titles. Uh, he's very confident, and this is an ideal surface for him. Good serving, good footing, and a good bounce on return of serve. So I, I think he's got a very good chance to win this title again. Like Pam Shriver, he said he was happy to be in this exhibition as soon as Arthur Ashe asked him. He has a lot of respect for that man. But let's go to our uh, chair umpire for the introductions, Mike Wallace. Ladies and gentlemen, the first men's semifinal of the Arthur Ashe AIDS Tennis Challenge features 1990 U.S. Open champion Pete Sampras. and 1991 French Open champion, Jim Courier. We'll be playing a 12-point tiebreak. Jim Courier will have the first serve. If the score is 10-all, the players will play one point to decide the winner. Gentlemen, let's begin. I'll take you story that happened before uh, Sampras just finished warming up and Martina came out behind him. She has short cropped hair now and said, uh, hi, Pete Summers. And he turned around and said, no, Sampras. My name's not Summers, Sampras. And he looked up and realized it's Martina and they got a big <laughs> kick out of it. Courier serving first. Well, they fired cannonball 
fouls on the first point. <laughs> one love. Courier is up. Courier. One zero. Talking to Sampras this morning, he was out here practicing. He said, there's just no way you can get into any rhythm or really prepare for a tie break. You just go out there and hope your shots go in. Well, there's a touch, Harry. One all. You know, the trouble with that kind of thing, you make it look so easy. And those of us who have played this game know it's not that simple. Two, one, that pass out of line. These two know each other so well. They are very, very good friends on the tour, and that's not the first time Pete Sampras has been beaten by a courier backhand. Nor the last. That's true. are pretty relaxed and having a bit of a good time out here but I guarantee they want to send a little bit of a message the guy that wins will say well that, that sort of sets me up better for the for the championships coming up there and so it's just nothing just an exhibition I like what Pam Shriver said it's her best win of the year <laughs> best win in a long time well Sampras also thought that it was uh, it was good just to have a chance to be on the center court he'll have a lot of matches out here if he keeps going in the tournament as expected he said playing a tie break is kind of nice for preparation. First, the kind of tension uh, that he'll face in the open, of course, will be a lot greater, but just kind of going through this, uh, he found uh, would be useful. Great touch again by Three. Pete Sampras. Oh, and Courier did a great job. He had to jump over the chair. That could have been bad news. Here's another look and watch. Watch where Courier goes now. Got a leap over that chair. Boy, if he runs into that thing, he could have hurt himself. They've changed hands after the first six points. Oh, so Courier shows his little body ability. This also shows that Courier spent a little time in Barcelona watching uh, the hurdlers <laughs> track and field. That's what he said was one of the best parts of the Olympic experience. Waking up and seeing the greatest athletes in the world jog by you in the morning. Yeah, marvelous. back-to-back -back points to this point. They keep swapping points. That was one of Courier's line shots to center field. Five, four. Serve Sampras. comes to Sampras with a five, four lead. There's the match on his racket here. Two serves coming. shot down the line and makes it 5-4 so he'll get another serve. That's the shot that he would normally go out the other way with it but players know that so they look that way so he's learned to pull it down the line. Oh, that had to feel pretty good. Oh, look at him. 6-5 <laughs> Courier. Match point for Courier. This goes by like a rifle shot. Just hit it about as hard as you can hit a tennis ball. Six. Well, if they get to 10 all, they'll play just one point to decide this match. Following our 
our tennis action this afternoon, the NEC World Series of Golf coming up next, where Craig Stadler is leading at this point. Three under par, followed by David Peoples and Fred Couples. Should be a great finish this afternoon in final round play. Sampras. So now it comes back to Sampras with a chance on his racket again here. things I think that the, the spectators enjoy this kind of thing because they get a sense of how human these players really are. They do have a sense of humor. They will smile. They'll have little conversations with one another. They're not all enemies. gets back very well off the ground a good wrist snap and hit tremendous pace on that smash hit it perfectly flat and he's at match point advances to the final and Pat O'Brien will be back to talk to the players in a moment. You guys grab the ladder. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear Lisa. No one has to tell you that doing business today is more challenging than ever. But all over the world, one company is helping you meet those challenges head on, no matter what it takes. New challenges, new thinking. sunroof. It's a piece of automotive technology unlike any you've ever seen before. But then, so is this. Introducing the BMW 525i Touring. I love to work out. I like my body to be perfect. That's because I lead an active social life. I want to look good, but no matter what shape you're in, anyone can get the AIDS virus. And one workout that can protect you from the AIDS virus is not to take risks when it comes to sex. Find out what kind of behavior puts you at risk. Call your local AIDS hotline or 1-800-342-AIDS. Hi, this is Martina Navratilova. How close are we to finding a cure for AIDS? I would say that a cure is still quite a ways away. A cure in the sense that we would completely be able to eliminate the virus from a person that's infected. But I am much more optimistic about the prospects of having a therapy, 
therapy being a treatment that will allow one to prolong one's life. Uh, for instance, AZT may prolong life for a couple of years. And if you add, if you combine that with other drugs that might prolong life for a few more years, eventually one might be able to live out the normal lifespan even if one is infected uh, with the virus. Well, back here at the National Tennis Center, we have seen Pete Sampras advance to the uh, championship match, another tiebreaker, and he'll meet the winner of Agassi and McEnroe. That is upcoming following some more women's play. Let's go to courtside and Pat O'Brien. Well, the controversy down here, I don't think you know about. You say that ball was out at the end there. It was clearly on, on the line, I think. Uh, it was, it was what a, a good break. <laughs> what did you think? Uh, it was about six inches wide, honestly. <laughs> that, that's why. Let me talk to you about the event today, because I think the rap on young tennis players is that you're too young, you're too rich, you're too pampered. Does it feel uh, good to do something for a cause? Well, I've obviously, I think myself and Jim and Andre and, and John, we're, we're in a position in our career where, you know, we can help out a, a charity like AIDS or, or cerebral palsy, which is um, a charity. I, I donated a lot of money to the Grand Slam Cup a couple years ago, so I'm in a, in a position in my career where I can help out, you know, different charities like this one. Yeah, congratulations, by the way, on winning this. So what do you see your chances for in the U.S. Open? Well, just as good as anyone. I think you have to look at Jim. It's a great summer. Yeah, I've had a good summer, but if you if you look at the way Jim's playing and Stefan, who won it last year, I think my chances are as good as anyone's. But there, there are about six to eight guys that are, that are capable of winning this tournament, so I have to give my best shot. Right. Obviously, one of those guys is right here, Jim Courier. And, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Jimmy Connors' love for New York City and a blue-collar player. You certainly like that yourself. You love New York in this uh, tournament. Yeah, I love playing here. You know, uh, the people out here are really into the tennis, and, and they really rally behind the players. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, for I think, for everyone to come out and play here. Just a note, by the way. I asked him how he decides which hat to wear. Tell me your answer on today. Uh, just whatever matches. <laughs> Basically, this one's matching pretty good. So yeah, it's Pretty good. Thank you, guys. Good luck in the tournament. Okay. We'll see you later. Uh, Arthur Ashe uh, told me earlier today that uh, one of the things he wanted everybody to get out of today was some awareness about HIV and about AIDS. You know, a lot of people were surprised when uh, Arthur announced that he had contracted HIV, but he has carried it with dignity. And one of the things, the main thing he's wanted to do is to educate people, especially young people. I believe the children are our future them well and let them lead the way show them all the beauty they possess inside give them a sense of pride federal health officials consider it an epidemic yet you rarely hear a thing about it as far back as 1982 we didn't even have a name for it we do now and along the way AIDS has acquired a face you only thought it could happen to you know other people and so on and on and uh it has happened but i'm gonna deal with it and my life will go on a disease that is out of control with no cure a quarter of a million americans have it over 150,000 americans have already died and a staggering million are infected the vast majority of future cases will occur among heterosexuals we also know that a certain percentage of them will start sexual activity around 16 or 17 or 18. And if you really don't want to take any chances at all, which I would strongly suggest, I would abstain from sex until marriage. Prevention is probably the only hope that we have uh, for our youth for the next couple decades. Uh, and I think that the main uh, aspect of prevention is education. What does HIV stand for? The education message is trickling down. Health classes are starting to spring up, hoping that kids better understand HIV and its consequences. I know that if you have HIV, it doesn't necessarily mean you have the AIDS virus. Well, I'm invincible. This can't happen to me. It can happen to anybody. It's easy to say use a condom, use a condom, but it, it, it can be really difficult. Role-playing in class has become a vital educational tool. Are you trying to tell me that you have a HIV? No, that's not what are I'm trying to say. Are you trying to say that I have HIV? No, I'm not trying to say that either. So then what are you trying to say? I'm just trying to say that we should protect ourselves. But from what if neither one of us has it? But for some, the learning process came a bit too late. And you don't know who you are. I was very promiscuous at a very early age. And I was having sex at 12. Unprotected sex. And a lot of it. 20% or 1 in 5 of the over 200,000 Americans with HIV, with AIDS, developed it in their 20s. 
many if not most of them got the virus when they were teenagers. This thing doesn't discriminate. It has no, no race, creed, color, culture, or whatever. It's hitting everyone and it's hitting us really hard. We know that this is not something that's going to go away overnight and we're going to be dealing with the consequences of HIV infection in our youth for the next 10 to 20 to 30 years. And to support the Arthur Ashe Foundation for the defeat of AIDS, or for more information, please write to 100 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10017. Or beginning September 1st, dial 212-911-0096. And we'll be back with more women's tennis on a glorious day in New York City from the National Tennis Center after this. Stay with us. Eclipse. Noun. The motion of one heavenly body passing in front of another. An eclipse occurs only with the perfect alignment of arcs and curves and angles. Eclipse. Verb. To surpass. To leave others behind. Eclipse for 1992. From Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. You may also lease a base model Eclipse for as little as $500 down at $149 a month. If you can dream it, the Rebel can do it. Now EOS Rebel from Canon has more power to create images, not just snapshots. Image is everything. EOS Rebel and Rebel S from Canon. So advanced, it's simple. Hey, I'm vain. Of course I'm vain. That's why I comb my hair the way I do. I stay in shape the way I do. That's why I use Power Stick. 50% more wetness and odor fighters per stroke. Power Stick by Fabergé. Power that won't let you down. I told you I was vain. Jimmy and Chris for Newprin. Jimmy, tennis? At your age? Ooh, if I can do it, you can, Chris. Not me. Tennis is tough. So are kids. You're telling me. My back, my shoulders. You know what to do for pain. I noop it. Noop it with Nuprin. A strong medicine. It works where it hurts. Works for me. So how about it, Chris? Maybe Alex someday. I'll be waiting. Nuprin. For back jointer muscle pain. Nuprin, the body pain medicine. Tim Ryan back at the National Tennis Center and this reminder that the address for information Arthur Ashe Foundation for the Defeat of AIDS Incorporated 100 Park Avenue New York New York 10017 or beginning September 1st call this phone number in New York area 212-922-0096 beginning September 1st well, we have more tennis now. The second semifinal in the women's competition will feature Arancha Sanchez Vicario of Spain coming off a very important win over Monica Sellis just recently. And uh, this young lady now comes in as a serious contender to win the U.S. Open, Mary. She really is. I got to figure she's going to make her way to the semifinals at least. As you said, she won the Canadian Open by beating Monica Sellis. She also played very well in Barcelona, finally losing to Capriati, but she won herself a, a bronze medal there. She's already been to the semifinals of the Australian Open this year, the semifinals of the French Open. Frankly, she hardly ever loses before her designated round, whether she's, if she's seated four, figure she'll get to the semis. If she's seated eight, figure she'll at least get to the quarter. She just doesn't take, take bad losses. One of the most popular players out there. They, she's loved all over the world. Here's another popular player, particularly in this country, from Miami, uh, Tony, and a steadily improving player. Now ranked number seven in the world, Mary Jo Fernandez. Very solid off the ground. She's trying to learn to attack more. And a uh, very happy young lady at this stage, having won the gold medal in the Olympics in doubles with Gigi Fernandez. No relation to Mary Jo Fernandez, but a very solid tennis player. Just can't quite get there at this point, but uh, she's hoping that she can break through in one of the Grand Slam events. Well, if you've just joined us along the way, the competition all afternoon is in the form of a shootout of tie breaks or tie break shootouts. 
And that means that uh, they're playing a 12-point tiebreak, first to seven, must win by two. And that will be the format. The winner of that tiebreak will advance against Pam Schreiber for the women's championship. Well, let's go down to our distinguished chair umpire who has yet to make an error in the chair, our <laughs> own CBS 60 Minutes star, Mike Wallace. Ladies and gentlemen, the second women's semifinal of the Arthur Ashe Aids Tennis Challenge features the Olympic doubles gold medalist, Mary Jo Fernandez. French Open champion Aracha Sanchez Vicario. We'll be playing a 12 point tiebreak. Mary Jo Fernandez will have the first serve. If the score is tied at 10 all, the players will play one point to decide the winner. Let's begin. Mary Jo Fernandez will start the match serving. Both players are just centering the ball in the early going. Just get a feel for the win. And also, did you notice when Sanchez Vicari hit the underspin backhand with no speed, how Mary Jo had to adjust because the wind blew it right into her? Sometimes the ball struck without pace or more difficult in dusty conditions. Because these two play the same style, you're going to see longer points. I think Mary Jo thought she was going to get a lob here. She really wasn't ready to cover that ball when it went down the line. Sanchez Vicario leading 2-1. Fernandez to serve now. Two all. Two all. Well, if it's September coming up, it must be pennant fever time. And uh, the Atlanta Braves leading the West. Tied 1-1 with the Phillies at the moment. Toronto. A big battle with Milwaukee's been beating up on the Blue Jays and Toronto leading in the bottom of the second one nothing in that game. Another backhand error from Arancha. They'll change sides. That's how it stands. In this tie break, the winner to meet Pam Shriver. Well, uh, Mary Carrillo and I will be uh, here tomorrow night to begin our U.S. Open activity with the late night show, 11.30 Eastern and Pacific. And the toughest tournament in tennis gets underway tomorrow here at the National Tennis Center. We'll keep you up to date with highlights and all of the latest news from the Open beginning tomorrow night. Double fault by Arantxa. Our colleague in the chair, Mike Wallace, and boy do I like calling him a colleague, he mentioned that Arantxa won the French Open. 
1989. She's only 17 years old, and, but she's a much better player now these days. A couple of years later, she's much more aggressive. She has much more variety in every department of her game. And back when she won that French, she did it with an awful lot of running and, and just a lot of heart, a lot of will. She's got more weapons than that now. She was headed toward the net on that one, but she knocked it long. Another ally for that young Spanish gal is her enthusiasm for life in the game. She is bubbly and fun all the time. Fernandez up 5-3. And it's 5-4. I don't think anybody ever cheers against Arancha. It's impossible. She's just irrepressible and, and so likable. They might be pulling for the favorite on the other side of the net, but they never cheer against her. Tennis playing family, or brothers Emilio and Javier, both outstanding players on the men's circuit. Arancha got to the mixed doubles final here last year with Emilio. catch up. See this ball almost backs up toward the net. That's the idea with the underspin. Fernandez got to it but couldn't make the shot. Match point. against American Pam Schreiber. Still to come, John McEnroe and Andre Agassi and their shootout. It's all coming up here from the National Tennis Center in just a moment. Hi, I'm Mary Jo Fernandez. What part of the population is most at risk to AIDS? Teenagers are certainly very vulnerable to HIV because A, they don't realize that this epidemic is about them, and B, Adolescence is a time of experimentation, and in the early days of experimenting with sexuality, many kids don't understand that they're at risk for HIV and therefore don't take the appropriate precautions. Just northwest of Kalispell, Montana, there's a place where you can punch cattle instead of a time clock and discover what horsepower is really about. It's the Hargrave Cattle and Guest Ranch, where you can ride them and rope them like they used to. But if you go, you gotta pull your own weight and pull out your Visa card. Because at Hargrave, they don't take the tin horns and they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Just because you go all out, doesn't mean you gotta stink. Not if you're wearing this. Here comes your chance to prove it. And you will, because because Old Spice works. Man, does it work. My sweatness kills bacteria. The proof? Hey, hot shot. You're looking at her. <laughs> Old Spice antiperspirant for great odor protection. You demand proof, not promises. Our instructions had an error, and a thousand orders were due Friday. With the speed of a Xerox digital color copier, you'll get this order on the road again. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Putting it together. We'd like color in our copies, but what small business can afford it? 
with Xerox Highlight Color concerns about the cost of color disappear with just a touch. Intelligent color for any document, only from Xerox. Putting it together. It's not gonna happen to me. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen to me. I was really shocked when I found out I was infected. I didn't think anything like this could ever happen to me. Only certain people get it. I'm a good example that you can get AIDS from heterosexual sex. Who cares? I'm trying to make the best of the time that I have left, because realistically, I really don't know how much time that is. You could be putting yourself at risk. Call 1-800-342-AIDS. Here at the National Tennis Center, John McEnroe and Andre Agassi have just taken the court for their tie-break shootout. And uh, let's go down to courtside right now. Pat O'Brien is now perched a little higher than he was. That's right. Kind of an unusual way to do an interview, but uh, I guess it's better to interview Mike Wallace than to be interviewed by him. Hello, sir. Good job up here. First of all, you had the thrill we always look for. You had a great uh, sports thrill out here getting that point. I tell you, that last shot, I'm serious, to beat Dinkins and Sellis, that was a heck of a thrill. You said you were... Uh, as you keep your eye on your players, right? You said you were terrified doing this today. You're, you're... I don't know why, but I, my mouth was dry. Come on, you're out here in front of I don't know how many thousands of people, and you don't want to make a fool of yourself. And so uh, I understand I'm hearing in, my, uh, in the interrupt that that match will be seen later today. I hope they show just the winning. <laughs> it was a good match, and I think everybody's having a lot of fun today. Well, I tell you something, this is extraordinary. I mean it, because there wasn't a lot of publicity about this ahead of time. And to get, I don't know how many thousands of people out here, it's a tribute to Arthur. Everybody wants to do something for Arthur. So today, a heady experience. You play with Martina in the afternoon, and you have Barbara Streisand on 60 Minutes tonight. Got it, Pat. A promo. <laughs> Back to you guys. <laughs> and a good one, a too. <laughs> Indeed. Thanks, Pat. And congratulations to Mike. We are going to show you some of uh, the action from uh, his match and you sure will see Mike's winning shot. Well, John McEnroe and Andre Agassi getting ready to shoot out down here. McEnroe currently ranked number 18 in the world and uh, coming off that semifinal at Wimbledon, Mary, uh, I guess now everybody thinks, hey, if Connors did it last year here at the U.S. Open, maybe it's McEnroe's turn. Yeah, I, I don't think you can really, even at this stage, consider McEnroe a favorite to win the U.S. Open, but he can certainly be a spoiler. He showed such good form at Wimbledon, although I feel strongly that grass is a better surface at this stage in his career than the hard courts of U.S. Open over two weeks and three out of five sets, but he's playing pretty well. He's uh, very excited about this. We all know that he grew up in Douglaston, which is only about 25 minutes away from here. Uh, he's won this thing four times. That's more than any other Grand Slam title. He's won many doubles titles here as well, including one in 1989 with Mark Woodford. He was a semifinalist here at the U.S. Open two years ago. I mean, this guy can play ball in New York. Well, his opponent today, Andre Agassi, is the Wimbledon champion, Tony, and uh, what a tremendous confidence boost that must be for him. Uh, people wondering whether this youngster was going to win a Grand Slam. Well, he sure did. Well, he certainly did. People involved in the game said the one Grand Slam Agassi would probably never win was Wimbledon because of grass, his lack of serve, et cetera, volley. He wins that, uh, did it beautifully, handled himself well, and that should give him a tremendous amount of confidence coming here to the U.S. Open. A true bounce good footing and I think he uh, he has a, a real good shot uh, in this tournament I say he's going to win it uh, as Sampras said several men have a chance to win it but he would certainly be one of those he's got Wimbledon colors on today perhaps as a 